the director of the Fort Myers Film Festival. You know, I'm Eric Raditz. Uh, we've, uh, we're very excited to be playing uh, this, the lost film of Nuremberg. Uh, we have with us today, uh, Jean-Christophe Klotz, the filmmaker, uh, sitting here with us. Hello. Hello. And uh, we have with us Casey Schelberg, uh, writer, director, producer. Hello, Casey. And uh, Sandra Schelberg, also uh, who's preserved and been involved with the films and film preservations. Thank you guys for all being here. Uh, and I may just want you guys to kind of give a brief introduction on to your involvement with this film. Uh, since if I tried to do it, I know I wouldn't get it perfect, but maybe we'll start with uh, Jean Christophe. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about this film and how you got into uh, making it. Sure. Um, actually, uh, I've been a close friend to Sandra and Casey as uh, our fathers and mothers were. Uh, we've been friends for uh, maybe that's the second generation. Maybe we'll get into that later. But I, um, I heard, of course, about Sandra's work on, uh, on the film um, directed by her father, which is called uh, Nuremberg, It's Lesson for Today. And I, I, I had this story in the back of my mind for a while. And, and uh, as I work regularly with Arte, which is a European cultural television, and we were scanning ideas of, of uh, documentaries, I told them about that story. Um, uh, and it happened that, you know, it was the 75th uh, anniversary of uh, Nuremberg. So, you know, we start talking about that. I called Sandra. I asked her if she would be interested in helping me to do this film. And that's how everything started. Sandra, let's maybe move over to you. So when he approached you about it, tell us uh, what you were thinking and uh, how you started to get involved. Well, I embarked on uh, researching what had happened to our father's official US documentary about the Nuremberg trial after our mom died, Casey's and my mother died in 2002. And we found ourselves in possession of boxes and boxes of what were at that time to me rather mysterious archives, documents of the making of Nuremberg. I later learned after working with various scholars at the Holocaust Museum in Washington and the German experts on the film that it had been officially suppressed in 1948. But none of that, that was a detective story that took a number of years to unravel. And along the way, I decided that because the film had never been released in theaters in America, that I really needed to restore the film. So that was a five-year effort. Uh, and we finally premiered the restoration at the Berlin Film Festival. Then it premiered uh, in 2010. Then it premiered at the New York Film Festival. And then it began a life in theaters that spread all the way through 2011. So along the way, I, uh, I wrote an article called Filmmakers for the Prosecution, which kind of inspired Jean Christophe's telling, I think he can jump in here, but I tried to tell the story of what had happened to the film. And we, we sort of used that as the narrative spine for the documentary that Jean Christophe has just completed called The Lost Film of Nuremberg. Now, and just to back up, because you are all so close to it, maybe this is where we ask KC to come in. Uh, you, your family's involvement uh, with Nuremberg, its lesson for today, and compiling uh, footage uh, that helped bring to justice uh, during the Nuremberg trials was what this movie is about. And essentially, there, there are some kind of heroes in a way, and what they managed manage to accomplish. Uh, and tell us a little bit, KC, about just the premise of what your father and uncle uh, did uh, mm -hmm. putting together this footage that we'll be yeah. seeing at the film festival. Well, well Jean-Christophe's Jean movie, uh, really very, he tells the story about my father, young man, he, I think one of the, he was with uh, collecting war crimes evidence for the Nuremberg trial, along with his older brother, my uncle Bud, so the two of them uh, were given this assignment to uh, 
travel all over Germany because uh, Chief Justice Jackson, and Sandra's intimately more knowledgeable about this than I am, but Chief Justice Jackson made the decision early in the Nuremberg trial to only incriminate the Germans with their own footage, with their own archival evidence. Uh, this is the the idea was that if the, if Allied film was used, it might be construed to have been doctored or or edited, and so they made the decision very early on to only use German photographs and film footage as part of the war crimes trial. So my father and my uncle were were given the the job to run all over Germany and try to collect evidence that would be used in the in the trial. It was the first time that film evidence was used in a in a court proceeding. It was quite groundbreaking at the time. So we we've known about this film forever. You know, we we grew up hearing about it and knowing about the the film that my father made. And then Sandra, of course, made a, an en enormous investment of time to, to restore the movie and bring it back to the public. So uh, the film that Jean Christophe has done, the documentary, the one hour documentary, basically covers the, the job of collecting that war, war crimes evidence, but also talking about the making of the movie that my father did, uh, which was after the trial, talking kind of the definitive documentary about the Nuremberg trial. So there's sort of two pieces to Jean Christophe's documentary. The first is explaining how that all that war crimes evidence was collected, and then the second was gets into the making of the movie uh, that my father uh, produced and directed. So we're really thrilled to to have this movie and to have uh, Jean Christophe's talent. Um, uh, you know, to be the beneficiaries of Jean Christophe's talent in the in this new documentary, which has never been seen in America. We're very excited to be screening it at, at the Fort Myers Film Festival. And you know, when you when you see the footage, when you see the film uh, Nuremberg: Its Lesson for Today, it is so thorough uh, and, it, and it's so well uh, uh, preserved and so well restored. Uh, and, but now, when we see this lost film of Nuremberg, the documentary by Jean Christ Christophe. Uh, we're seeing another side of it that adds so much more to it. Uh, just the work that went into uh, compiling all that footage. What was the, what was it important for you, Jean Christophe, to uh, make sure you you gave a uh, uh, focus to with this film that we that we didn't see in the film from Nuremberg: Its Lesson for Today, but in your film, what, what was important for you to find focus to or something along those lines? Yeah, I, I have a, some sort of a personal motivation to this field beside our friendship. Uh, it's that I've been working for a long time as a, as a journalist, uh, as a cameraman, and I've been covering several conflicts, uh, you know, in the last uh, 25 years or so. And I was always um, kind of frustrated by, um, how can I put that in English? Um, the way television... Um, doesn't emphasize enough for me the, the, the memory of history, what happened you know, in the past years. That's something as a journalist that always um, bothered me that people don't remember what happened last month, last year. So let's talk about 75 years ago, you know? So my main focus was how can we uh, transmit history through images? And as a cameraman myself, as I said, I was, I'm very sensitive to this problem. And the Schulberg family is very much involved in the movie. So in the, the, the footage, the, what we call in French, the images, I don't know if it's exactly the same word, filmed um, footage. So this was mainly my point of interest. How can you transmit an experience of history through images? And Second, how history is written, how it's construction, visual construction. And of course, uh, uh, the, the, the work of uh, the Schulbergs is very, very important in the construction of the narrative of, you know, uh, our visual memory of time. And um, Although there has been a tremendous amount of effort to do this mission, which was complicated, dangerous, uh, in a very short time, um, Stuart managed to do the, the film of the trial and then 
the decision was made not to release the film in America, which is very, it, it, you know, we can learn a lot about the, the, the whole story. What, what does that mean? After spending so much time and effort, then suddenly because of political situation, um, the authorities decided not to release it. So this also teaches a, a lot about history. And, and it's something that it's something that we're looking forward to everyone saying, I don't want to give too much away as to the reasons why. Um, <clears throat> but the importance of it today, you know, it's based on this film called Nuremberg, It's Lessons for Today, which was, you know, originally uh, we're talking about, you said, 75 years ago, 70 years ago. Uh, and now <clears throat> still we're seeing it today and its lessons still seem as important for today. And you know, can, can anyone kind of speak to that as to why this film is so important for today? Well, I'd like to remind people that Justice Jackson and the uh, legal team, and it, it wasn't just Jackson, it was the lead prosecutors from the other major allied nations that jointly prosecuted this first ever uh, tribunal that prosecuted, that attempted to define and prosecute not just war crimes, but crimes against the peace and crimes against humanity. And the Justice Jackson was perhaps the most articulate on this point. They really hoped that the, that the trial could perhaps outlaw war in, in, in perpetuity. I mean, use, create a new, new mechanisms uh, under international law, set new precedents that would permit the prosecution of what they called crimes of aggression. Justice Jackson and others believe that war crimes and crimes against humanity all derive from what he called the greatest crime of all, and that's the crime of, of aggression, the crime of waging war. It, what strikes you when you see my father's film, which the script for which was approved by Justice Jackson, is how idealistic they all were about this notion of, end, of putting an end to war. And I, I think that's one of the things that is most inspiring and most surprising about, about the trial itself and about my father's film. It also relates back to, and I know, you know, we, <laughs> you warning against spoiler alerts, but it also relates directly back to why the film was suppressed in this country by Secretary of War at the time. In terms of the film's relevance for today, you know, the, the film, our father's film was never released in the United States, but it was released in Germany. And it was part of the deprogramming of the American citizens so that the truth- uh, German citizens. German, German citizens. Uh, so that the, uh, the horrors that were committed by the Third Reich were, uh, the, the citizenry would be informed of the horrors that were committed by their leaders in an effort to deprogram them. Uh, to denazify them. So the relevance for me uh, on this issue today is, uh, you know, I think we have a, a serious issue in, in this country at this time with uh, uh, a need to deprogram people from certain perceived, uh, perceived beliefs, uh, which uh, I think, uh, you know, you know, what with the, the, the extent to which we have become untethered from the truth in America and where there's there's a wholesale belief among maybe 20 percent of our population that, uh, the, that the election was stolen, that COVID masks, that the uh, health care workers are out to do us uh, uh, evil, that uh, the election, the election officials are being threatened because of just going through the process. So there, there, I think that the we need a similar program in the United States to deprogram those people who are sort of have become uh, followers of, a, of a, a whole indoctrination program. So I think there's resonance for this movie today. Uh, uh, you know, and you asked the question, what is, what, is the, what is the relevance of this movie today? I think there's, uh, ex there's extreme, there are parallels between the way people were programmed in the 30s in Germany and the way people are being programmed today to believe certain things which are patently untrue. 
and how uh, so I, th I think that I think if, if we can drive that point across uh, maybe during the panel discussion at your festival I think we'll be doing the community a service that's awesome <clears throat> you know once again we're if you're just uh, kind of tuning in we're sitting here uh, with the uh, filmmakers and uh, crew of the Lost Film of Nuremberg playing at the 2021 Fort Myers Film Festival. Uh, we are taking a good look at this film and as mentioned, we're gonna have a panel. Uh, uh, Jean-Christophe, um, there's a sense, I think, <clears throat> well, from, from the, from the watch, from people who are watching this for the first time um, and <clears throat> who, who San Sandra and Casey are tied to this because their father and uncle were uh, really these heroes who, who, who provided finding the testimony and the Germans were shooting uh, their own propaganda. So it was from the presentation of the Germans that they were showing mass executions. And it seemed as if, as, as we watched this documentary, uh, one thing that struck me was that <clears throat> before that visit, uh, video evidence was pr provided, uh, there was a real stone face uh, as to the, the, the insistence that this didn't happen and they didn't know about it and <clears throat> had nothing to do with it, uh, one per, one of the one of one of them, I forget which one, uh, pretended he couldn't speak, and then after he saw the video evidence, he said he could speak now and he will speak out. Uh, <clears throat> t tell me the significance of the video, the videos <clears throat> that Stewart and Bud uh, provided for that testimony, the importance that that was to to bring to justice uh, those those who were involved. Sure. Well, people have to understand that uh, the Nuremberg trial was a, a, a big. Um, how would you say that? A, a very big media encounter also. It was uh, really an, opportu an opportunity to, to show the world what happened and how the Americans and the Allies also were trying to, to bring these people to, to justice. So the fact that this footage was screened at the Nuremberg trial made a huge publicity to, to, to these, uh, this footage. Uh, historically, as I understand, there has been uh, some footage that was aired or broadcast before the trial, uh, but maybe the fact that it was screened in this situation, very solemn situation, you know, with all the uh, the Nazi guys were there, you know, the whole world was watching, and and I think that made kind of a ritual. It was very important to have all these people in the, in the in the room in the courtroom watching uh, in silence uh, these terrible footage and i think uh, as one of the interviewee uh, says uh, the, the, he, he, uh, niklas frank who was the, the son of one of the nazi um, that was executed after nuremberg trial um, uh, he he said probably my father of course my father knew about the situation, but for, in his case, he has never seen this footage. So the fact to to watch it and to watch it in that situation from the you know the bench of the uh, the comment dit les accusés les the, the, the prosecuted Nazis it was it made a whole uh, difference. Uh, there was a ritual uh, sense of you know sharing. This, um, uh, this, this footage, all these people together and, and, and under the eyes of the whole world, of the whole, the press, there was probably 400 journalists. So it was very important. I mean, that, that may be another resonance for today because the, what Jean Christophe was referring to earlier about the, the uh, visual recording or images recording for dissemination and for information. I mean, that was the first time that film was ever used as evidence in a court trial. And we know the impact of visual evidence, the Selma, the crossing of the Selma Bridge with John Lewis and, and uh, uh, that, that was filmed. And that's, that got people's attention because th that kind of abuse, that kind of cruelty had really never been seen by the American populace. And within years, the Voting Rights Act was uh, was uh, was voted on, was implemented and voted on because partly because people for the first time saw visually and viscerally they saw the the evidence of the of the horrors. And the same thing is true with police cameras. You know, people, you know, blacks have been dying in this country for decades, 
basically anonymously. And because we now have police, police have cameras on their chests, and more of them are being recorded either by the police you know, police cameras or by citizens on the street who have a, who have one of these, and 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 suddenly this visual imagery is helping to 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 bring about more social justice. So that's an, another interesting aspect of that of how that filmed evidence was used in a trial and how that helped to move public. Opinion. I think Casey's making a very good point. Um, I also want to point out though that Jackson, as as one of Jean-Christophe's interviews, uh, interview subject says in his film, the, the trial turned out to be, there was a great deal of interest at first in the trial because here was this first trial in history and they were prosecuting the top Nazi leaders. However, uh, it quickly became a very dull affair because Jackson uh, believed in as Casey said, using the Nazis' own documents to incriminate them. So there were just reams and reams and reams and reams of paper, some of which was just read into the record. And Jackson therefore decided to advance in the schedule, the showing of Nazi concentration camps, one of the two films that the OSS film team put together. Uh, that, that film, by the way, was shot not by German cameramen, but by Russian, American, and British film teams who were part of the uh, armies that liberated a number of these concentration camps. And Jackson moved this film up to November 29, which was just a week into the start of the trial, be partly because he could see that he was losing the interest of the press corps, and also because uh, one of the leading members of the accused, Hermann Goering, was, was managing to create a kind of solidarity amongst the accused and, and treating the, the, the trial quite lightly in a somewhat cavalier fashion. And this was undermining the prosecution's case to some extent. So when they uh, chose to show this film, they also wanted to see the reactions of the uh, defendants uh, as they were watching the film. And my father and the rest of the team were charged with lighting the dock so that you could actually both see the images on the screen and at the same time see the faces of the defendants. Uh, so you have, and Jean-Christophe talks about this in this film, you have this kind of meta, interesting meta situation where the showing of the film is not just primary evidence, but it's also secondary evidence in terms of how the defendants are observing and perhaps being changed by their uh, experience of watching the film in a court of law. And then of course, these images went on to become, you know, to be recycled thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And I think that's one of the themes of Jean-Christophe's film is, you know, who, who writes history? How does history get framed for subsequent generations? There were very, very few people who could be in that courtroom and very little actually was filmed in the courtroom. So although they wanted the whole world to, to, to see what was to experience uh, allied justice and to participate and learn from the trial, it was actually very challenging to get that message out. And I, I think that's one of the saddest ironies of this whole situation that, you know, the War Department's film directed by Stuart Schulberg never did make it out, except as, as Casey said, in, in, in Germany. And there it was felt that it did have some impact on German audiences. You know, here, here we are um, 75 years later, uh, and it's as significant uh, today as, as it's ever been. And this documentary by uh, John Christoph uh, Klotz, uh, The Lost Film of Nuremberg, uh, will be played uh, here in the United States for the first time in uh, Fort Myers Film Festival, May 12th through 16th. Uh, we're, we'll be happy to have, I know at least KC will be there since you're a Naples uh, resident. So we're looking forward to having you there. And, 
Maybe we'll do uh, some more interactive uh, Zoom calls uh, during the festival. Uh, thank you so much, Sandra Shelberg, Casey Shelberg, and John Crucif Klotz. Any final thoughts that maybe I didn't get around to that you want to say uh, that, that we didn't get to? Well, thank you so much for being a part of this and we'll be sure to uh, get excited about uh, seeing this film. Thank you so much for being part of this call and for this interview. Wish you guys stay safe out there.